So you use this phrase, the struggle to survive. And I wanted to talk about what that word typically means just, you know, in, in a cultural way and where it sort of originated and developed and what it's based on, you know, what it rests on. Um, and it's really that we didn't, people didn't start thinking that way until the Industrial Revolution had already started. Um, you know, Darwin's theory of natural selection, while Darwin was observing nature, and we would say that, you know, no, he found that pattern of, of natural selection in nature. Well, his cultured human mind had been brought up in this newly developing capitalistic mindset. And so that was the, the interpretational um, origin of his naturalistic biological theory. So he was a capitalist interpreting biology projecting a capitalist mind frame onto each individual organism that he was observing. Um, and in a sense, that's the only way, that's the only interpret, that's the only perspective that he had, really, to give, because it's the only one he had. Simple as that. Um, but there are more than uh, a few perspectives to give to why organisms evolve, and what evolution is, and what causes evolution, or if, evol or if there is even is a cause, evolution might just be for the sheer delight of, of life, you know, it might just be because the universe likes to do what it does, it likes to do this dance that it survives, um, it might not be a struggle, if it was really a struggle, wouldn't evolution have selected life out altogether, you know, if it's really that hard, it's really that much of a toil, and uh, and a stress, wouldn't it have just said, oh, fuck it. It was a failed experiment. I'll just stay matter forever and just be a bunch of spin spinning dirt and gas. I mean, that, that would have been a possibility, too. But no, I mean, life is still here. And so sometimes there's a struggle for survival, but that's not the foundation of our existence by any means. Um, that's an interpretation that our economic um, framework has uh, forced us in, into. And, and what set up that economic model? I mean, there's the model is a hierarchy. It's the civilization civilization in the last in, in the industrial revol revolution became um, put in, it put got put into hyperdrive because we developed information technology instead of just industrial technology and informational technology changes the way people think and um, when you start to change the way people think you start to change the way the universe exists because it's spurring this evolutionary development of the universe itself like human beings are 13.7 billion year experiment that the universe is, is attempting to, to pull off and you know like we're like way out on the edge of this this momentous expression with all these inter intricate intricate stages of uh, development and it's uh, it's all supporting us right now. civilization sort of cuts us off from the rest of that story and says no human beings started the day we began to farm and that if we're going to judge human nature we have to judge only human beings up until that particular time because before that we still think of ourselves as animals and that's really what the story of the Garden of Eden is all about um, right after Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the of the garden, of the tree of knowledge, of good and evil, they started to name all the animals. And once they name the animals, they have power over them. They're no longer themselves animals. And, you know, eventually this, this mindset developed the idea, well, hey, we can start to farm. The animals don't farm. And, yeah, like, it, it kind of feels wrong, like we're breaking some sacred rule. Not a rule that's an authoritarian rule, but a rule 
that is a natural evolution of nature, a natural balance of nature. Um, not only for on the on the biological level to sustain an ecosystem, but on a mental level to sustain a, a sense of balance and, and you know emotional well being for the organism itself. Um, civilization, the, the development of civilization is the development, it's, it's a repression of our, not only our primal instincts, but our primal intuitions. So, in other words, you know, our instincts pulling us down into the material world, into, you know, sexual drives and, and uh, the need to eat, and also intuitions, which are our spiritual drives, our need to know truth and to uh, be good. Um, those have always been with human beings even before we became civilized, and we're still dealing with those same issues. Um, but this, this civilizational process that builds up this hierarchy has these super rich, super powerful elites at the top who, just because they own so much of the capital, uh, as a result, own a lot of the culture because of this informational technology that we have now. Not only do they, do they own the means of production, they own the means of representation. You know, the media. Um, but, you know, all this is really doing is speeding up time. And history itself is an invention. It's, it's sort of a, a story that we started to tell. And as we tell the story of history, we enact the story itself. So in other words, whatever we, you know, there's lots of versions of history. Like, you know, when I was in high school, I learned the uh, state's version of, of American history. And then after I graduated and went to college, I read Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States. And, you know, they're not exactly, um, they're not exactly congruent stories. Uh, I mean, they fit together, you know, the bottom half and the top half, or, or, the, or the conscious and the unconscious, maybe. Uh, opposed. Um, you know, so, you know, again, things weren't any better in the past. I think we're always pretty much the same. We're okay. And that's what that, you know, my first video was about the dark video, the confessions to an alien video was more about me realizing, hey, everything's okay. You know, it's not going to be any better than it is now. It's not going to be any worse than it is now. You know, generally, this is life, and it's just as beautiful as it is ugly in every moment, regardless of which particular moment it is. Um, so things are any better in the past. I'm just asking that we remember the past, though, and um, not not that we regress to it and and sort of try to you know bring ourselves back there, just that we sort of make it concrete to ourselves that that. We still have to think in terms of the way the first people ever thought and, and the decisions that they made, you know, to begin farming or to be afraid of death and to respond to that fear in the particular way that the mainstream mass of humanity responded to it, or at least that an elite class responded to it to manipulate the, the masses. You know, I don't know which way it was. It's probably... The masses sort of uh, manifest this elite class as a projection from themselves. So the power isn't really located in the elites or in the people, but sort of in a, a give and take exchange going on between them. Um, because you can't really assign a cause or effect relationship to either side, because they're both interacting. Um, and yeah, I, I, this is a good response you had to my uh, Walt Whitman thing there, because I don't have. So I have so much more to say, and I'll have to do another video because I'm almost done now, but I just wanted to mention some of the synchronicities that have been happening. Um, not only to your video, Dharma Tamster, that I had posted the sort of about how I felt like, you know, the world wasn't ending and we didn't have to be so negative about the state of the world. Uh, I said all that stuff right before you posted your response to my Whitman video about the same issues. And yes, last night, while I was uploading my Whitman video, I saw... Um, a Theologica's Whitman video, and it was pretty weird that we we're both putting up at the same time. And uh, ZZZ3333's um, Ishmael mentioned today was pretty weird too. Uh, 